Hello everyone, in this video we're going to go over what ethical hacking is and why it's so important. And if you are interested in ethical hacking, please subscribe to the channel as there are many videos coming soon. Hello everybody and welcome to this lecture and right now we're going to discuss briefly what ethical hacking is. Now this tutorial is basically for anyone who is wondering whether they want to get into this, whether this is something that they are particularly interested in, or whether this is something that they thought would be interesting but after this video they decide it is not for them. So first of all, we all know about three terms for the ethical hacking, or most of us know about the three terms such as the black hat, the white hat, and the grey hat. Now. Uh, before we discuss all of those three, we want to first define what ethical hacking is. Well, an ethical hacker is, and you should notice a part of this sentence where it says ethical, is basically a white hat hacker who uh, breaks into different systems, networks, uh, companies, in order to prevent the cyber criminals, the black hat hackers, to actually invade and steal some valuable information. So they're the ones that are actually attacking the system in order to protect it. Okay, that is the basic idea of an ethical hacker. It is uh, more and more uh, available to us now in the uh, technologies, basically what most companies now do is they hire ethical hackers in order for them to actually attack their own websites, companies, or basically any kind of system that they want to protect. And an ethical hacker should provide them all the vulnerabilities that he or she was able to find, if there were any, and how they can protect them. Okay, now uh, enough about that. We want to talk about what black hat, white hat, and gray hat is. Now the black hat is an evil hacker. Basically, a black hat is someone who breaks into a system without any uh, approval from the client or from the anyone who owns the system. Basically, they break in just to steal valuable information such as credentials, usernames, passwords, different types of messages, or basically anything that is valuable uh, to someone. For example, we all know about the Sony hack that happened a few years ago where Basically, the a hacker group hacked entire Sony platform and it didn't really happen once, it happened multiple times and that is just an example of black hat hacking. Now, that is a black hat, basically an evil hacker, and a white hack is basically an ethical hacker who hacks for good. He basically hacks in order to prevent unauthorized access to the system by uh, hacking it and then securing it in the proper way. And the grey hat is the mixture of the black hat and white hat, uh, pardon me, white hat, and basically he is the one who uh, does a little bit both uh, from the black hat and from the white hat. Okay, so basically uh, the now let's talk about ethical hacking in more detail, basically the certified ethical hacker, uh, which is CEH, which is also a certificate for, which we're going to talk about later on, uh, is basically a, it is also a credentialing and training program provided by ES Council. Uh, it is respected and trusted ethical hacker program in the industry. Now, since the inception of a certified ethical hacker in 2003, the uh, credential has become one of the best options for industries and companies across the world. Okay, now uh, today you can find basically certified ethical hackers working with some of the finest and largest companies across industries, uh, like for example, government, financial, healthcare, energy, and many more. They work for those companies in order to protect them from the black hat hackers who might be able to break into their system and steal valuable data. Now, uh, basically, some of the questions that you might have are what kind of vulnerabilities does an attacker see? What can an attacker do with the information? What is the best way to fix the vulnerability? Uh, how many people notice the attempted attack? And for example, what information or system would a hacker want to access? Now, those are all of the uh, things that you need to actually question uh, once you perform a penetration test or once you attack a specific target, you need to know what can we do with the specific information once we get to it, how many people will notice that we actually attempted the attack or that we actually went through with the entire attack and managed to actually steal something. Now, and the most important thing are what kind of vulnerabilities do we see? So what kind of vulnerabilities can we find on the protected server that we want to hack? 
okay and basically uh, the importance of ethical hacking is growing more and more each year uh, like 10 years ago most of the people if you would ask some random people on the street they would be like uh, that is not really that necessary it is just a hobby and right now it is growing in one of the most important careers and fields in the IT community today basically everything right now is going over the internet over uh, it is connected to different computers the power plants the nuclear plants everything is connected and basically the importance of ethical hacking is growing just because of that because the damage can be done more than it could have been done 10 years ago for example now with the uh, coming of the internet of things everything else will also be connected to the internet such as uh, your microwave your fridge everything so you don't really want anyone else besides you to be able to control your own flat okay so basically the government agencies and businesses organizations today are in constant need of ethical hackers to combat the growing threat to IT security. Now, a lot of government agencies, professionals and corporations now understand that basically if you want to protect the system, you cannot do it simply just by locking your doors. You need to try to attack it and see what are all of the available ways in order for someone to get in. Okay? Now, there are most of the actual terms and imp expressions that you should know as an ethical hacker, but we're not going to talk about that at the moment. We're only just going to mention it. Uh, basically, this is a course where I will teach you how to get a job. So I already assume that you know a little bit about ethical hacking or that you are in the process of studying and you want to see how you can get your first job. Uh, this is not a course where we will actually teach the ethical hacking. There are a bunch of other courses, which I will show you later on, where you can actually learn ethical hacking. Now, you should already be familiar with some of the terms and, and expressions if you are an ethical hacker, such as worms, malware, viruses, ransomware, and so on and so on. Uh, so if I mention them, I will actually uh, believe that you already know what they mean. Now. What are the benefits of ethical hacking? Now, the primary benefit of ethical hacking is to prevent data from being stolen and misused by malicious hackers or attackers such as black hats. Now, uh, what are those uh, precious data or valuable data that, or however you want to call it, basically that can be uh, discovering vulnerabilities from the attacker's point of view so that weak points can be fixed. Now that is one of the benefits of ethical hacking, such also implementing a secure network that prevents security breaches. That is also a job of an ethical hacker. Uh, defending national security by protecting data from terrorists is a little bit extreme, but it is also the benefit of being an ethical hacker or of having an ethical hacker in your own company, or in this case, in the government. Government hires ethical hackers in order to prevent their precious data from being stolen by spies or terrorists or basically anyone that wants to get their hands on the data. Now, also uh, gaining the trust of customers and investors by ensuring the security of their products and data. Now, you always want to make sure that the website is secure once you actually want to provide that website with your credit card number, with your uh, low, uh, physical address, name, last name, birth, and so on and so on. All of those valuable information to you need to be protected by that website. So that website most likely hires ethical hackers to test their security and to see whether there are any vulnerabilities or basically any holes in the system from where the bad guys can get in. So you want to make sure that your data is secured properly before you actually uh, input your credit card number next time. Uh, you can also help protect networks with real world assessments. Now, there are multiple types of ethical hacking. Now you can hack networks, uh, websites, uh, Basically, there are even physical hacks, such as, for example, breaking the doors to a company. Now, that is not really a point of this uh, course, but I'm just mentioning there are a bunch of different things that you can do uh, with the actual thought of being an ethical hacker.
it is very interesting once you get in and basically the jobs can also be very interesting now let us talk about types of ethical hacking we just mentioned it like right here but we're going to talk about them in more detail now it is not a big secret that any system process website device or anything else can be hacked now in order to understand how the hack might happen and what the damage could be ethical hackers must know how to think like malicious hackers and know the tools and techniques they're likely to use so there because of that we actually split ethical hacking into a few different sections each section is actually uh, aimed at a specific parts such as for example web application hacking is aimed at hacking websites basically uh, even the word says it it is basically used to hack websites to protect websites uh, such as for example SQL injection, XSS injection, XML injection and so on and so on. Now for those of you who are not ethical hackers don't worry those are just some of the terms or some of the attacks that you can perform onto the website. Now the next thing is the system hacking which is one of the most important ones basically the system hacking is uh, getting the access to for example your and my machine so for example, someone can install a backdoor onto my PC and monitor everything I do, such as control my keyboard, control or run a keylogger in order to capture my passwords, uh, run a webcam, record my microphone. Basically, they can do anything once the system is hacked or once my computer system is hacked. We also have web server hacking, basically hacking of the databases. Uh, for example, let's say someone hacks into Facebook, they enter their database and basically they steal everyone's usernames and passwords. Therefore, the attacker would have everyone, uh, uh, everyone's Facebook account and you can only imagine what kind of information that would be. Now, of course, it is really hard to hack Facebook and even if you do manage to hack it, it will probably get patched uh, the same day uh, if someone finds out, of course. And the more popular a certain website or a certain company or something like that is, such as Facebook, Google, Twitter and so on and so on, the harder it will be to hack them because they have hired multiple ethical hackers, cybersecurity experts in order to prevent any kind of intrusion to happen on their own platforms. Now, we also have hacking wireless networks. Now, wireless networks are something that can easily be hacked, especially if someone who's uh, set up that wireless network uh, has set a big password for that actual wireless. It can be hacked in a matter of milliseconds in that case. Uh, and once you actually breach the wireless network, you can perform different types of the attacks, such as monitoring, uh, networks network connections uh, man in the middle attacks uh, sniffing different packets sniffing data sniffing passwords and so on and so on you can perform ARP spoofing and all of those actual terms that you should know if you're an ethical hacker if you're not once again don't worry you will learn it later on in some different course if you decide that ethical hacking is a job for you and we also have at the end the social engineering which is the mostly uh, nothing actually uh, aimed at the systems or websites or something like that it's most likely an attack aimed onto a human being so for example you can uh, hack people such as asking them simply what the password is let's say you want to hack a wireless network in a cafe and the easiest way you can do that is to ask the waiter there what the password is. There is no need for you to brute force anything, you can simply just ask for password and if they give it to you, they give it to you, if they don't, then simply you perform different types of the attacks aimed for wireless networks. Also, let's say you want to steal some precious data once you're in the network, uh, you need to make sure uh, that the, you need to make the person that you want to hack uh, to input somewhere you, their password where they shouldn't really input it. So basically then you clone the Facebook page, let's say, you clone it to look exactly like the real Facebook, you send to the, uh, you send it over the local network with the ARP spoofing and with the man in the middle attack and basically then the actual target will input their password in, into a fake Facebook page 
and therefore that is a type of the social engineering attack because you actually manage to make a human being input their password where they shouldn't. They basically believed that that page, Facebook page is a real Facebook page and therefore they typed their email address or username and also their password and therefore they therefore you managed to hack their account by getting their password. Okay. Now we already talked about types of hackers such as black hat, white hat and gray hat hackers. Now there are uh, now let's talk about the phases of ethical hacking. Now there are different stages in the penetration testing process such as First of all, the step number one is the planning and precautions. Basically, the first step in an ethical hacking is to define the scope and goals of a test as well as the testing methods to be followed. Now, it also addresses intelligence to understand the potential vulnerabilities and how a target works. Uh, basically, you will not have every time a same target. Some targets can run different things on them, different programs, different software, and all of those targets should be approached differently. Okay, now the prospective footprinting is made through search engines, uh, web services, social network sites, DNS, email network, uh, and so on and so on, by simply using footprinting tools. You can, there are a bunch of other tools that help you actually discover more and more about a certain company or a certain uh, target that you want to hack. Uh, you simply can use just Google, different search engines, and so on and so on in order to plan out your attack and in order to find out most of the things about the company as well as the people working there. Sometimes the easiest way to get in, in or to hack something is simply just by hacking a human being. There is always that example of an older woman working in a big company that is very well secured. Basically, let's say there is no other way to get in and simply then hacker just finds out that the older woman likes cats and then one, uh, once she's at the job the attacker sends an email with the cat image which has a virus attached to it and then the older woman opens the cat image and the virus is ran and basically now you are in the company even though you didn't really breach any security measures in order to get there. Your target was an older woman that likes cats, and just because she worked there, they, you managed to hack the entire company. Now, the next part of the step two in the penetration test is the scanning. Now, the second step, or step or basically scanning, is performed to understand how target reacts to various intrusion attempts. Uh, basically, in two ways: when the application's code is static and when the application code is functioning. Basically, you scan a target, and once you actually scan it, you can see how different open ports react to a certain scan, uh, what they are running, what version of software they're running, and where you should plan your next attack. As well as the step 3, which is the gain access, and this is a crucial step where the web application is attacked using SQL injections, for example, cross-site scripting, backdoors, or basically anything else in order to find the vulnerabilities and then exploit them by stealing, intercepting traffic and interfering privileges in order to understand what can you do to that specific target. And once you actually gain the access and manage to actually exploit the target, you want to maintain that access. Now in this step of penetration testing, the vulnerability is used as a persistent presence for a long duration in the infected system in order to, for example, stain sensitive information or to spread inside a network, quickly gaining access to different machines, different servers, and anything else. And the last part is the final stage of the analysis. And basically this final stage of a penetration test is the stage to compile the result by analyzing and commenting about the vulnerabilities exploited or some of the access to the data that you shouldn't have access to and the basic the amount of time that the tester can remain unnoticed in the system. Okay, so basically the last step is nothing really uh, focused on the ethical hacking or on the penetration test, you basically just write everything you found, every vulnerability, if you know how to fix them you also write how you should fix them, what approach they should take in order for that attack not to happen anymore. And basically that is the last step of the analysis. There are different 
certificates that you can take which we're going to talk about later on but for now let us just mention them there is a certificate for example certified network defender uh, that certificate program focuses on creating network administrators administrators who are trained in protecting detecting and responding to threats on a network now the course contains hands-on lab based on major network the course online would uh, most likely contain the hands-on labs based on major network security tools and techniques which will provide network administra administrators real-world expertise on current network security technologies and operations. Now, another certificate that you most likely have heard of is the Certified Ethical Hacker or CEH. Uh, basically, the CEH uh, creates individuals in the specific net network security discipline of ethical hacking from a vendor level perspective. Now, this is the world's most advanced certified online ethical hacking training uh, where they will teach you everything from hacking systems, from web application hacking, from social engineering and all those different types of attacks that you can perform on your target. There are different steps in these certified ethical hackers such as practical attacks and once again at the end you have the master uh, certificate uh, where basically they will teach you everything at once. There are also some of the more advanced certificates such as Certified Threat Intelligence Analyst and Certified Security Analyst such as the uh, Practical Certified Security Analyst. Okay, and at the end you can get the LPT or the Licensed Penetration Tester and therefore uh, you will actually be able to go and um, get hired by some company. Now all of these certificates are not really a must, you don't really need to have any of them in order to get a job. Uh, in the ethical hacking community it is always important to have the knowledge and to be willing to get the knowledge. It is more important to, to actually be interested in the field itself and to think like a hacker than to actually have any of these uh, certificates. Basically they are not needed for you to get a job. But we'll mention them later on and talk about a little bit more about them uh, as that is something that you that will help you get a job but it really isn't needed. So that would be basically about it for this video. What we talked about right here is basically what ethical hacking is, what types of ethical hacks are there, why you should um, basically what kinds of ethical hackers are there such as black hat, gray hat, white hat and what types of penetration tests can we perform, which targets can we attack, and so on and so on. So after this video you should have a pretty good knowledge whether this is something that you sh could be interested in or not. Uh, if it is, you can proceed with this course and you can, and I will show you later on which online video courses you can start, you can start with in order to start learning ethical hacking. So hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope I will see you in the next lecture. Bye. Thank you everyone that watched the video to the end and please subscribe if you want to see more videos on ethical hacking and programming.